Design engineers always used to rely on the standard 6 transistor SRAM bed cell for embedded memories. But this cell has many drawbacks and it consumes a very large area because it requires 6 transistors in order to be implemented. It also consumes a very large power due to the leakage currents which happen inside the cell. It doesn't support two port operation which means that it cannot do a uh, read and write at the same time. An alternative for the SRAM is the gain cell EDRAM. As we can see from the picture here that the gain cell EDRAM or the conventional gain cell EDRAM consists of only two transistors, but it also has some issues. From these issues is the degradation of the storage node by passing the time and this storage node need to be refreshed using periodic refresh cycles. So our solution is better. Why it's better? Because it allows two port operation. It is logic compatible. No special processing steps are required for fabrication process. It's smaller in size compared to the SRAM. A memory with higher density can be implemented. The refresh and leakage power is smaller than SRAM. It also allows non-destructive read. It means that there is no write back process is required as in the case of DRAM memory. The target and the impact of this design will be that it will offer the engineers an alternative for the SRAM and this will decrease the huge gap which is between the memory performance and the CPU performance. Now I will leave you to the demonstration video which will explain the debugging process of the memory array in details. So this is the final layout of the 2 kilobit full memory design including all the blocks and the decoder sensing amplifiers and write and read drivers. The simulation process was done after doing the parasitic extraction for the chip. Now we can start the simulation after adjusting the settings. We will start the simulation. After the simulation is done, we can find here the output signals for the whole process. And the testing was done at the maximum frequency, which is 400 megahertz. And then after that, we can find that the data output after writing and reading is as expected so we can see here that first we are reading one then we are reading zero then reading one then reading zero and the process goes on so the output results are as they expected for the simulation i will show now how to do the write operation debugging process here we can see the right clock signal and the right enable signal for the right decoder and the inputs for the write decoder will turn on the last row in the memory array. When this meets the global clock of the memory, this will turn on the pre-WWL driver and the pre-WWL driver will turn on the WWL driver with the boosted voltage. This will turn on the right word line of the gain cell as we can see here and then the operation is done by writing a 1 to the memory and we can see here that a 1 is written to the storage node of the memory here for the read operation the same procedure will take place where first the read clock signal and the read enable signal will turn on the read decoder and the output of the read decoder will turn on the read word line driver circuit after meeting the global clock signal as we can see the storage node is still contains one and the read word line is high then the bridge charge circuit will charge the rpl which is the read bit line and we can see that because the stored value is one so the bridge charge signal will go go down and be get discharged and we can see that the sensing amplifier will sense the decrease in the voltage and within the output will be uh, reading a one. That's all for my demonstration and thank you very much for watching.